today I'm going to rank every Red Dead Redemption 2 character in a tier list, starting from the worst characters going all the way up to the best characters. 99% of my viewers are unsubscribed, so if you'd like to see more content like this, subscribe as we'll be posting tier lists every single day. In last place, I've got Alberto Fusar. He is probably the most disappointing villain of Red Dead Redemption 2 in general. There's not really much characterization going on with him, and I just think he's not that much of an actual antagonist in the game. Like, he's just this this guy that owns and runs a sugar plantain, just like any bad guy. We don't really understand why he does it. He just does it for money, it seems like, and you get a really bad death with him. You don't actually get to kill him yourself in a cutscene. It's like you have to shoot him from the top of a tower, and you don't really care when he dies. He's just this guy that's a villain for like four chat or four missions in the fifth chapter and being like the main villain of a full chapter just means he really doesn't get the same treatment as some of these other villains do so i think i'm gonna have to put him in f tier he sucks as a villain in 48th place i've got joe micah's friend and again joe is pretty boring as a character i guess he's technically an antagonist but also a member of the vanderling gang for at least just that last mission but he's just pretty boring you don't really get to talk to him at all and like at least cleat has a pretty large role in that one mission like the the last mission where you rob the train and cleat you actually get to you know talk to him during the epilogue joe you just shoot him down and gun him down really quickly so i don't think joe has a big enough role to really demonstrate anything higher than f tier in 47th place, I have Molly O'Shea. She's just Dutch's woman the entire game, and she doesn't do anything more than that. Like, she's like, oh my god, Dutch is talking to Mary Beth, and he's hitting on Mary Beth, and there's just, like, stuff like that. She doesn't really do anything besides that, and there's not really much character development, and even when she died, I didn't really have that much of a, oh shit, it was just like, oh, she's a rat, and she did that. And then when she wasn't a rat, it kind of lessened that. So, I don't know, I don't really like her as a character, and she's definitely an F-tier character. In 46th place, I've got Strauss. I mean, I know a lot of people do like Strauss, or at least like him for not ratting on the gang but i don't think that really matters to me and i just don't like his profession i don't like that he doesn't really interact with the gang i just don't think he's like i know he's a necessary evil but i just hate him as a character so much that he has to go really low down in this tier list even though he's a necessary part of the game so i think i'm gonna have to put him in f tier don't like his missions don't really like anything about him he's just a boring character and he doesn't really help the gang out at all so f tier in 45th place, I've got Cleet. Cleet is kind of like Joe. He's just boring. He's in that one mission, but at least you get to talk to him in that last mission where you do rob the train and you get to talk to him during the epilogue where Sadie has the chance or you have the chance to hang him, but Sadie will shoot him if you don't. And I think that really is what put Cleet's above Joe, but I think they're still both really boring characters and they're just both like kind of generic bad guys at least cleat does leave micah's side eventually while joe doesn't but i think they're just two really boring characters thrown in to show that micah has more control over the gang so he's also gonna have to go in f tier in 44th place i've got colonel favors i think he's just not that good of a villain as well when you kill him during this last moment where he kills eagle flies i didn't even really realize it was colonel favors this entire time and i feel like he's just this generic bad army villain and well i think you kind of need someone like him in the game, unlike Fusar, where you could just put any replaced character there and it's fine. You need kind of someone like Colonel Favors to be like the bad guy that's encroaching on the Wapiti's land. He's just such a boring character. And you don't really get anything out of him besides he's like trying to be ambitious and trying to take out the Wapiti because he didn't have that much success earlier in his life. So I think he's just an F tier character. He's just super boring and doesn't really do much growing. In 43rd place, I've got Reverend Swanson. He's cool at least for a little bit, but he's just a drunkard for most of the game. And then when he does finally sober up at the end and leave the game, like he does do some cool things and he's like finally a good character at that point. We don't really get to do anything with Swanson besides that one first mission. And I feel like you don't really get to talk to him that much where it really like developing a bond between Arthur and Reverend Swanson. So I think I just have to put him super low. You just don't develop enough of a bond with him. So I think I'm gonna have to put him in D tier. In 42nd place, I've got Bo Gray. Again, Bo Gray is someone I know a lot of other people like, but I just don't really think he plays that big of a role in the story. He's not really involved in the Gray versus Braithwaite's feud besides his romance with Penelope. And while they're okay characters, in my opinion, they kind of just make Arthur their, their like fetch guy. And I don't know. I just don't really like them as characters that much because they just play this generic Romeo and Juliet feud. And while they're still cool people in their own right, they're, they're just kind of these boring people and they don't really have much going on them besides, oh, Bo's in love with Penelope. Oh, Penelope's in love with Bo because they're so different than everyone else. Like, I get that, but there's not really much special going on with them, so I'm going to have to put them in D tier. 
In 41st place, I've got Penelope Braithwaite. I think she's also kind of the same thing as Bo, but at least she has a little bit more connection to her family where she you know, like talks to her cousin here and there's like a little bit more going on with her. But again, they both just fall into this really generic Romeo and Juliet scenario and they're just kind of these like boring people. There's not much going on with them enough to justify them going any higher than D tier. In 40th place, I have Jamie Gillis. I think Jamie's pretty cool on his own. I like that he kind of falls into the cult, but then Arthur kind of pulls him out of it. And he and Arthur kind of have this older brother, younger brother bond. But it's only really in this one mission where you actually get to rescue Jamie is the only one where you actually talk to him. So he's not really involved in that much. And I think just because of that, he can't go any higher, even though the times you do get to spend with Jamie are, in my opinion, pretty solid. So I think Jamie Gillis also has to go in D tier. Pretty revolutionary for this one part, but doesn't really do much for the rest. In 39th place, I've got Karen. I think she's a cool character in her own right, but she just gets drunk way too much and is just sloshing around camp, especially after Sean's death. And before Sean's death, she's a little bit more interesting, especially when you get to go rob the bank in Valentine. But I just don't think she does enough to really put value herself any higher. She's not really in a lot of the missions and she's kind of just this boring character who gets drunk a lot and then argues with Miss Grimshaw and like her, Tilly and Mary Beth kind of all hang out and whatever. But I don't really think she does enough to warrant herself a tier any higher than D tier. In 38th place, I've got David Geddes. I kind of like him just because he does own the farm or pronghorn ranch that John actually ranches on. But I don't think he's that interesting in his own right. He's a really nice guy, but there's not much character development going on. He also does frequent the town's brothel and does a lot of other unscrupulous stuff. And like he and his wife have an open relationship. So that's low key a minus for me, but I think he's a really nice guy and he does a lot to help John throughout his life. So, I mean, he's an okay character, but he doesn't really get that much screen time. So I'm also going to have to put him in D tier. In 37th place, I've got Tilly. I think Tilly is pretty similar to Karen where they both are kind of in this weird spot where they're not really involved in the gang, but they're kind of involved in other ways. She does have a couple cool missions with like Anthony Foreman, but I feel like she's not really that much of a benefit and there's nothing really interesting, that interesting going on with her throughout the entire game. So I don't know. She's an okay character. She's in the kind of gang with Mary Beth and Karen, but there's not really much going on with her. So I'm going to have to put her in D tier as well. In 36th place, I've got Archie Downs. I think Archie's a solid character, and I th like that he actually like fights back against Arthur, especially in this mission right here, where he's like, Arthur, you gotta stop talking about my dad like that. And then he's like, Arthur's like, oh, I'm gonna put you in the dirt with him, which is kind of funny. And I like that he actually has a pretty strong personality, but he just kind of is a generic, moody kind of teenager person, and they just kind of base him off of a lot of stereotypes and stuff like that. So there's not really much interesting going on with him, but I do like him as a character and just being someone that's able to fight back against Arthur makes him kind of cool, at least for a little bit. So I'm also going to put him in D tier as well. In 35th place, I got Bill Williamson. For Bill being the antagonist of Red Dead Redemption 1, I just don't think he has enough screen time or enough development here. Like there are the hints of him being a homosexual at times, but there's not really any definitive proof going on with anything in Bill's life. And whenever he is in a mission with you, like the raid on the O'Driscoll's camp or even the Van Horn one, I feel like he's not that interesting. And if he is in a raid with you and some other people, he's almost always like the third guy or the fourth guy. He doesn't really talk much. So there's not really much going on with him so even though he is like a big part of the gang i still think he's a d tier member in 34th place i got agent ross agent ross is kind of just agent milton's sidekick for this entire game but because he becomes one of the main characters in red dead redemption one i think like i have to put him a little bit up because all of his experiences in this game kind of shape him for the next game and it just i don't know it really works well how they segue between the two games and they kind of build it up from that so i think agent ross has to be pretty high up here for comparing it to what he actually does in this game he just kind of is agent Milne's sidekick and does whatever he does but i think because he's a good character in red dead redemption one i'm gonna have to put him a little bit up here and when you can see the differences between the two games it really works to build his character a lot so i think i'm gonna put him in c tier but he's not that great of a character in this game in 33rd place, I've got Hercule Fontaine. I think he's a pretty solid revolutionary character and they have to have him in Guarma here to be like on the good side, but I don't really think there's much going on with him. You don't really have any character development from him. Basically, he's just a generic revolutionary character and I don't know. I, I just don't think there's much going on with him. He's a really nice guy in terms of like he wants to help the Vanderland gang get off the island because they're going to help him start a revolution in the, on the island so i don't know he's a cool character but he doesn't really do much so i think i'm also gonna have to put him in c tier 
In 32nd place, I've got Police Chief Lee Gray. I think he's kind of cool when you actually get to like talk to him and he's like a super drunkard guy, but there's not really much going on with Lee Gray and I think he's just kind of a boring character as well. You kind of see him as the top of the Gray family, but at the same time, there's another top of the Gray family and the Braithwaites have like a bigger, badder villain in this mission. I just feel like he's pretty generic compared to like at least the other top of the Gray family and the top of the Braithwaite family. So I don't know. It's just... He's a cool character, but he doesn't really do anything special for me. So I think he also has to go into C tier. In 31st place, I've got Jack Marson. I know a lot of people like to play up that Jack is like one of the coolest characters in the game, but he actually doesn't really do anything at all. Like I know he's a fun character and he's like this little kid and it's fun to either like dunk on him or be like, oh my God, Jack is the strongest character in the entire game. But it's like, it's Jack. He's like a little kid. He's not really doing much. And especially in the epilogue, he does become Loki a little bit of a bitch. So, I mean, you can't really put him that high, but you can't put him not that high either because he is a pretty important part of the game. And especially when you look at it in the lenses of Red Dead Redemption 1 and Red Dead Redemption 2, you can really see that it's the tragedy of Jack Marston and it's no one else. And Jack Marston is like the main character of both games. So I think that's going to have to put him in C tier at least. In 30th place, I've got Miss Grimshaw. I think she's a pretty solid member of the camp as she kind of just cleans up after everything. And I think she's kind of a badass, especially in the last couple times where she does kill Molly and get killed by Micah. But I think in general, she's not really elaborated upon that much. You kind of see her relationship with Dutch as she was like Dutch's old fling. But I don't really think there's that much going on with Grimshaw. But I think she is a very solid character and a very integral part of the camp. And that's why I'm going to have to put her pretty high in C tier. In 29th place, I've got Captain Monroe. I think he's a solid member of the whole game, but I don't think he does really anything that interesting. I mean, he is kind of this guy that's super set on morals, and he wants to, you know, broker a peace treaty between the Wapiti and the U.S. Army. And I think the mission that really, like, stands out to me as Captain Monroe's best mission is the one where he gets shot at by everyone, and he will never turn his gun on the U.S. Army. I just want to say respect to him respect that loyalty, but if it was me in that situation, life or death, I'm shooting that gun. But I just want to say, because of that, I think he's a C-tier character. He's really solid, but he doesn't really do much in the game. In 28th place, I got Pearson. I think he's pretty similar to Miss Grimshaw. He just kind of keeps the cl camp clean and kind of does stuff for the camp, but he's not really that interesting of a character on his own, right? At least you do get a little bit more development of Pearson where you get to see his letter to his aunt and he just kind of pretends like he's this cool guy when he's actually not and he's a camp cook. And I think when you actually go out hunting with him, there are a couple few few moments where you actually are like oh Pearson's a cool guy and does all his things but he's kind of underappreciated but he's still not that interesting of a character I think he's gonna have to go in C tier. In 27th place I've got Thomas Downs. I think Thomas Downs isn't really that interesting of a character in the game but just because of how his tuberculosis and gain his tuberculosis or Arthur gain his tuberculosis actually affects Arthur I think he has to go pretty high in here and he's also just a super stand-up guy. He's always raising money for people and he's just a really nice guy. He wants Arthur to stop fighting Tommy and all that. I don't know. He's a really nice guy, but there's not really that much character development going on with him. But because of how his character affects Arthur, I think he has to go in at least C tier. In 26th place, I've got Brother Dorkins. Brother Dorkins is pretty cool as a character. He does, he has like a really heart of gold. I mean, he's a missionary and all that. So he's a really nice guy, but there's not really much going on with him. You have this one mission where you do rescue the slaves from you know, getting shipped out to Guarma, but there's not really much going on with him besides that. You do have that un other mission where he's like with Sister Calderon, but I feel like Sister Calderon is the main person of that mission. And then he eventually leaves. So I don't know. He's a cool character, but there's not really enough going on with him and enough development with him or conversation with him to really put him any higher than C tier. In 25th place, I've got Kieran Duffy. I think Kieran's a pretty solid character, especially as he turns from a no Driscoll, like an enemy, to an actual like friend of yours. And you can do some cool things with Kieran, like going fishing with him and going on some missions, like the one in where Kieran saves your life. But I think his death here, in my opinion, is kind of like just a shock factor. Like you don't really get to know Kieran that well because you can't, because it's just super hard to do all the things with him. And he's not really in that many missions where you can really like clearly consider him a friend. I get as you do multiple playthroughs, you might try to become more friends with him, but it's really hard to actually become friends with Kieran and like actually grow to know his character. So I think he has to go pretty low in C tier. In 24th place, I've got Javier Escuela. I think Javier is a very overrated character. I think he's still a solid character, but again, with Bill, 
it's like both of them are Red Dead Redemption 1 antagonists and they don't really they aren't really explored that well in Red Dead Redemption 2 itself like there are some cool things that you get to know about Javier but I don't really think you can get as close to him as you can some of the other characters I think that's just why he's held back you don't really see him as this main character that's doing a lot of stuff with Arthur and like being really good friends with him he's kind of just the side character with Bill and some of the other people in the gang where it's like he's part of the gang but he's not really a main part of it and he's just one of the side characters so I think I'm gonna have to put him in C in 23rd place I've got uncle I think uncle's definitely built more as a character in the epilogue than the actual main story but I think he is still a fun character in the main story as he's like really cool with Arthur and I feel like he just roasts other people but again he's not really doing that much and while he's a really fun character and I like him there's not really much character development he's just kind of this guy that takes from you and is a parasite I mean I know everyone calls him a parasite but he really is a parasite throughout the game he just takes from other people and doesn't really contribute much and I know that's like a part of the fun of uncle but I think at a point it does get a little bit too much of a stick for uncle and it's like uncle's just a parasite the entire game in 22nd place, I've got Mary Lynn. I think Mary Lynn is a very overhated character. I think she's a pretty solid character in my opinion. And I know a lot of people hate her for what she kind of does to Arthur, but I think she's still a very solid character and you know, just her interactions with Arthur and how she's really stuck on her morals that Arthur needs to get out of the gang business and stop doing all that to actually get with her. I think that's a very big part of the game and kind of just shows how Arthur like loves people and all that. And it just shows his like soft side where he wants to do that, but he knows he can't. So he instead tries to help the people that can live the life that he can't, especially with his tuberculosis. So I don't know. I really like her, her inclusion in the story, but I don't think she's like well-rounded enough of a character to go any higher than C tier. In 21st place, I've got Abigail Roberts. I love her as a mother character to Jack and a pretty strong influence on John to actually become a family man. But I think, again, she's a pretty one-dimensional character. She kind of just, you know, has this really rock of a personality to save Jack from stuff and to stop John from doing stupid stuff. But there's not really much that goes on with her besides that. But I think she does eventually kind of soften John up to the actual family life. I think that's a really important part of her character. And the fact that she's really stuck on her morals and wants John to do good things and like set a good example for Jack. I think that makes her a really solid character, but she can't go any higher than B tier. In 20th place, I've got Josiah Trelawney. I love him as a character. He's a really fun guy, especially on Fine Night of Debauchery. And just kind of anytime he's in there, he's this really whimsical character that is like, I feel like he's a magician, but at the same time, he's not. He's a con man. But I just love him as a character. He's a really fun guy, but there's not that much going on with him. I know you can meet his family in Saint Denis and all that, but he's kind of like this side character that comes in and out of the gang, but doesn't really spend a lot of time with the gang and is just like in and out. So... I can't put him any higher than B tier, but I really love his character whenever he has a time in the gang to actually, you know, be a part of it. In 19th place, I've got Angelo Bronte. I think Bronte is a really solid villain. You have him as this pretty one-dimensional, just like immigrant became a mob lord. But I think he's kind of a fun character. He's this really rich guy and he tries to buy out all the Vander Lynn gang members no matter what. And, you know, they never, they never actually fall for it, but I like how like one-sided he is. He's not as good as Cornwall, where Cornwall is kind of this villain the entire game. Bronte's only for the fourth one. And you see how replaceable he is when he eventually does get replaced by Guido Martelli. But I just love showing, like he's just the perfect representation of corruption as a whole. And I just love his death as well, because you just get to throw him and feed him to the alligators, even though it's a really unsatisfying death in my opinion. So I'm also gonna have to put him in B tier. In 18th place, I got Mary Beth. I think she's a really solid character. I love the like brother-sister dynamic they have between Arthur and her, where she's kind of like the, the sister, the younger sister, and he's like the older brother, but she always like comforts him. They always have these really like nice and loving talks between them. And she also always like dances with Arthur and all that. So there's like a lot of fun moments between the two of them, but it's not like they're really like in love. It's more brother-sister like. And I don't know, I, I just like the dynamic between them. And I think she has more of a cool dynamic between her and Arthur than like Karen or Tilly do. I feel like they don't have that same kind of recognition with Arthur and they don't like talk to him about his feelings. So I think she also has to go into B tier. In 17th place, I got Edith Downs. I think she's a really solid character that kind of turns Arthur into the good man. Like she really helps him see the side of himself or he at least 
helps her so then he can see that side of himself where he needs to help other people and i think she's a really strong woman she i mean pimps herself out to make money for her son and she doesn't want her son to work at all but eventually when she doesn't make enough money her son eventually starts working in the coal mines and all that and i just think she really changes arthur's character and she goes through a lot and changes a lot and then eventually becomes a very successful golf course owner i think at the end of the game you can see that and i think that's really cool i think she's a really solid character and that's why i'm gonna have to put her in b tier in 16th place i've got katherine braithwaite i think she's probably one of the stronger antagonists throughout the entire game but she's very one-sided where she's just like this really cunning old woman she's not like anything she's not strong or anything but it does kind of have a different you know perspective where she's like the the black widow at the top of the braithwaite family but i love her death i think she's just it's the perfect way for her to die you hate this woman and you want her to die especially when she takes jack away from everyone but just because she is only in one chapter or like the main antagonist of only one chapter you can't really put her any higher because she doesn't just play a big role in the rest of the game so i think i'm also gonna have to put her in b tier with everyone else in 15th place, I've got Sean McGuire. I love Sean as a character, and I just love all the charisma and all the jokes he puts in when he's actually alive. But then when he does die, it's really early in the game, and you don't really spend enough time with him. He's not in the first chapter. You only pick him up in like the middle of the second chapter, and there's just not enough time spent with probably the most charismatic person in the entire game. And while he's only there for a short time, I feel like his short time really lasted on me more than a lot of the other characters do. do. He's a really nice guy, even though he always is like making jokes and all that. I think he's just a really fun character. And if he was there for a lot more time, I think he'd be even higher. But just because he's only in the game for a short time, I'm going to have to put him in B tier. In 14th place, I've got Lenny Summers. I love Lenny as a character, but there's not really much going on with him as well. You don't really get to hear much about his regular life besides like him just being a fun guy to hang out with. You do have the assault on Shady Bell yourself and you have the Lenny mission. Like those are really fun missions, but there's not really much else going on with Lenny except he's like this really young guy that should be out of the gang. And I don't know. Lenny's a really fun character, but I don't think you get the same characterization as a lot of these people that are higher up on this list. So I think I'm just going to have to put him in B tier, but he's a really solid character. There's just not enough characterization going on with him while he's still alive. In 13th place, I got Colm O'Driscoll. I love Colm as a villain, and you just kind of see him as this unstoppable guy, pretty similar to Dutch. I feel like they have very similar morals, but just like on different sides of the spectrum. And I just think his death is probably one of my favorites in the entire game where you see him and he's like, he's like all confident going up to the stand. And then you eventually see him like get all scared when he actually is about to die. So I think that's really fun about him. And I think just because he is a villain over all six chapters of the game, I think that really kind of brings him up a lot more because he's like a villain that's going on throughout the game. And I think that really just, I don't know, it works well for the game. And that's why I think I have to put him in A tier. In 12th place, I've got Agent Milton. I think Agent Milton is a really underrated character. Like I know he doesn't really do much, but the fact that he's like, always tries to give the Vanderlyn gang an out. It's like Arthur's like, oh, you can turn in Dutch and get out of here, or you can do all these things to get out of there. And the Vanderlyn gang never takes it. They always want to fight back against the Pinkertons. They want to fight back against Cornwall. And I think Agent Milton is a guy that really runs it by the books, unlike Agent Ross. But I think Milton's a guy that, yeah, he's, he's a really nice guy at the same time as trying to do everything through the law. And while he is doing bad things by like turning Micah into a rat, Everything he's doing is like lawful and not actually, he's not actually an antagonist. He's doing the right thing by the law. And while it might seem bad and the way he's doing them are kind of bad, everything is lawful. And he's really the good guy in this story. Arthur and Micah and Dutch and all them, they're all bad guys because they're all bad people and they're robbing banks and killing people and all that. And Milton's actually the good guy in this story. But I don't really think there's enough characterization that goes on with Milton to put him any higher, but I still think he is an A-tier character. In 11th place, I've got Sister Calderon. I think she's a really solid character, and she really helps Arthur realize what he wants to do with the rest of his life. I know Cur or Captain Monroe and like Colonel Favors, this part of the game is pretty far out there, but when Sister Calderon talks with him for Of Men and Angels, and at this train station, he really understands that he needs to get John out. And I feel like that really corresponds with the high honor help John ending. And I think that just, it works perfectly with the game where Sister Calderon's talkings with him and Rains Falls talking with him really cement his 
uh, ability to go out and help people and try to help people for the rest of his life with at least the time he does have. So I think just because Sister Calderon helped Arthur move so far on and like do stuff to help other people, I think she definitely has to be an A-tier character. And the fact that she's also in some of the other games, that definitely does boost her up a little bit for me. In 10th place, about Hosea Matthews. I love Hosea as a character. He's a really nice father figure to Arthur and John, I guess. But I, I love him as a character, but I don't think he has enough like characterization. He's kind of just this old guy that, you know, is really sickly, needs to do all these things. He tries to do the right thing for everyone, but he's still a con man at heart. And while I do love Hosea as a character, I don't think they do enough with him to really warrant him being any higher than an A-tier character. Still love him. Still the times I do have with Hosea. I always treasure through every playthrough. But I think Hosea doesn't have a big enough role in the story because he kind of just takes the backseat to Dutch a lot of the times. And while he is a very nice guy and he does all these things and he really plays a fatherly figure role to Arthur, there's not enough where I'd be like, oh, Hosea needs to be an S-tier character. He's a very, very solid A-tier character, but nothing more. In ninth place, I've got Leviticus Cornwall. I think Cornwall is a very solid villain. I think he's probably one of the best villains in the entire game. He doesn't really have like anything himself. Like There's no characterization for him, but he's this big bad villain the entire game. It's like, don't mess with Cornwall, don't mess with Cornwall. And Cornwall comes into Valentine himself. I mean, he doesn't stay for the shootout, of course. He's a super rich guy, and he comes for the shootout, and he's like, get out here, Dutch Vanderlyn. I know you're in there. And it's like, that's, that's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Cornwall is kind of a badass and he's like this super robber baron character he also funds Milton and all that so like I, I do kind of like him as a character even though he's probably the most evil character in the entire game he just steals from other people and is just clinically a bad person like every single thing you hear about Cornwall it's always like oh this guy's a bad person he funds the people in Guarma he's stopped other competition he tries to start a monopoly he does stuff for the railroad he tried to stop the railroad and it's like all these things just show how bad of a person Cornwall is, but that just makes him that much better of a villain. And especially when Dutch eventually does kill him, it do, it's not really as satisfying as I think it should be, but it still is like, this guy is finally dead and the robber baron that has been robbing the world for the past, you know, probably five years is finally dead. And I, I think that's why Dutch killed him. So I don't know. I really love Cornwall's character. I think he's a very underrated character and he's definitely an A tier character. In eighth place, I've got Eagle Flies. I love Eagle Flies. I think he's probably one of the more bombastic and like ambitious characters, similar to Micah, but like in a more good way. He does clearly get manipulated by Dutch and all these bad things happen to Eagle Flies and his dad because of it and like the whole Wapiti tribe. But I think Eagle Flies is just a really great character. I love his interactions with Arthur and Charles. He's, he just always tries to do the best thing for his tribe, and he always thinks the best thing for his tribe to do is something violent, which clearly it's not. And I just love the contrast between him and his father. And it just really works to show like how these tribes are super split on like the old faction where they just want to keep what they have and the younger faction where they want to fight back with violence. And I don't know. I just love Eagle Flies as a character. I think he's really this amazing character, and you can see like the Wapiti tribe within him and his father. So I think I'm going to have to put him in A tier. Just love Eagle Flies as a character. In seventh place, I've got Sadie Adler. I think Sadie's a really strong woman character. You can also see like her transition from like kind of being a housewife, like doing stuff, splitting duties with her husband, and then eventually just becoming this badass woman who wants to kill the O'Driscolls. It does get a little bit like one-sided where that's all she wants to do. All she wants to do is kill the O'Driscolls, and she doesn't really want to do anything else, but she eventually does help Abigail out and John out and like Jack all out together. So she is like a good character in that way, but She's, she's kind of very one-sided after she does become this badass woman. And while I wouldn't say that's great characterization, I still think she's a really strong character. I like the banter she has with both John and Arthur. And I just think overall, she's a really great character. And you can see her turn from just like a regular person into this badass woman. In sixth place, I've got Charles Smith. I love Charles as a character. His morals are just so set and so strong, and he just doesn't ever waver from those morals. But I feel like that's also what takes him back from being an S-tier character. He's just so set on those same morals. He just wants to stop the bad guys, and he wants to save the good guys. Let's go, Charles. He also like stops the buffalo hunters. I think that's a really cool moment with him where he shoots the buffalo hunters. But just in general, I feel like Charles is too set on that one specific characterization to, in my opinion, be any higher than A tier as a character and just 
because of what he does, he does help both John and Arthur with everything. But I think he just, because he's so set on that one specific moral way to do everything, I think he has to go into just A tier, but very, very high A tier. In fifth place, I've got Rains Falls. I love Rains Falls as a character, and I think he's probably one of the best characters in the entire game. I love his, just his super passive style of being a character throughout the game. He doesn't want to hurt anyone. He just wants to do everything in a nice way, and he doesn't want any more senseless violence to happen. He doesn't want to continue the cycle that Red Dead Redemption and Red Dead Redemption 2 kind of show between the two of them where the senseless cycle of violence will always happen, and I think he changes Arthur's morals more than anyone else in the game probably sister calderon is up there but i think he's just like a better version of charles where he actually tries to change arthur's thinking on stuff while charles just kind of lets arthur do his thing but he wants to skew him in the right area versus like rainsfall actually tries to change his view with his ideas and i think just because arthur does eventually help out everyone it shows how good of a character rainsfalls is and I just love him as a character because of how he changes and affects Arthur throughout the game, especially when he has tuberculosis. In fourth place, I've got Micah Bell. I think Micah is a really solid antagonist. You just have him as this bombastic and just he always wants to do like the worst things, but they're not actually bad things. They just are the most risky things. And he basically just, just wants to destroy the gang or is that's kind of what it seems like. But I think Micah is actually not as bad of a character as you think. He just always kind of appeals to Dutch's side where it's like you always need to do bigger and better things to get more and more money to go to Tahiti and he really just influences Dutch in that way and having someone that's like a very powerful voice like Mike is a very outspoken guy and having someone on Dutch's right hand shoulder instead of like Arthur really pushed him in a way to and like change his character in a big way and especially like the Blackwater robbery where that's like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars or something and Micah always wanted to go back and get that money but you know they weren't able to until the end of the game and I, I don't know I just love Mike as a character and while he is this like super bad character I think his influence on Dutch really has to put him way high up here and just how good of a uh, performance the actual motion capture guy put in i think it really has to put micah bell as an s tier character in third place i've got john marston i love john as a character i mean it's always fun playing with him as the protagonist of the game but i think john you know you have a lot of development as this guy who he and arthur were just butting heads at the beginning of the game and they both just kind of grow to love each, each other and like really be the brothers that they've always been throughout their entire lives so i don't know i just i love that dynamic that grows between them and the fact that he actually wants to become Jack's father and actually is like nice to Jack the rest of the game. Like even though he doesn't really try to like become a super good father to Jack, he does try and do a lot more than he was doing earlier in the game. And he tries to become a good husband to Abigail and just like all the ways John just really improved his life. And I just think it really plays out well for Red Dead Redemption 1 where he is all about family and family is the only thing that matters to him. And I just think the development with John throughout his entire character and his entire life just shows how good of a character he is. And while, I mean, he's definitely not Arthur in, in my opinion, at least in this game, I think he has to be a really fun protagonist to play as and he's just a cool guy to be. So John Marson definitely has to be an S tier character. In second place, we have Dutch Vanderlyn. I think Dutch could actually be my favorite character of the entire game. I think Arthur definitely has a is a better character, but I think Dutch is super well written. The motion capture and voice performance is amazing. And just the fact that this is a man who's so stuck to these like communist morals, he always wants to break things and destroy things and basically stop the rich from taking from the poor. And he wants to redistribute the wealth from the rich to the poor and he wants to just always take away from these people and he always wants to do things bigger and better especially as he talks with Micah. I just think he's such a great character and while he does kind of go off the rails it works really well to build his character in Red Dead Redemption 1 and to connect the two games like that and I just think Dutch is such a great character. You see his development but you can also see the ways he was the same person in chapter one as he was in chapter six and he's always trying to do these things to make more and more money and especially when micah is on his left hand side and is saying oh we can we can do these things and we can make more money and we can go to tahiti and just the fact that dutch is probably the most charismatic character in the entire game you see how charismatic this guy is he turns like 
Agent Milton against him. He turns all these people against him, but he still has a bunch of people that rally around him. He builds this cult of personality within the Vanderlyn gang. Everyone wants to follow him. There's no way Micah would ever try and overstep Dutch because he knows he can't because Dutch is the one keeping the gang together. And I just think Dutch is an amazingly well-written character and definitely one of the best characters in the entire game. He would be the best character in basically every other game if there wasn't a great protagonist like this next guy. But I think Dutch is definitely an S tier character in Red Dead Redemption 2. In first place, I have, of course, Arthur Morgan. Of course, being the protagonist of the game has to put you really high, but I just love his character development throughout the entire game. You see him go from this guy that I'd say is a pretty much just Dutch's bitch and like an enforcer, to someone who goes against Dutch's will and actually fights back against what Dutch is doing. And you see him going from this guy who has questionable morals at the beginning. Like, of course he follows Dutch's like morality where Dutch always wants to take away from the rich and give to the poor or take away from the rich and just take for himself. Cause you know, he's Dutch, but you see him go from a guy that's an enforcer for Dutch to actually being his own man and, you know, having a better morality stance. He helps the downs people. He also absolves a lot of the debt of the people that Strauss gives from, and he kicks Strauss out of the camp. He does a lot of things that just like you wouldn't see Arthur do before because before he was all about the money and he was all about getting to Tahiti. But once he saw that Dutch really wasn't trying to do that and Dutch was just trying to make more and more money for himself, he realized that he had to flip a switch. And I just love that character development from Arthur, especially when he didn't have a lot of time. He just wanted to save as many people's lives as he could. And with the money he had, he, he was able to. He was able to save John, Abigail, Jack, was able to sell, save the Downses and just, I guess, a lot of the other people who left the gang before Dutch and Mike actually blow up and everything. He wasn't able to save a couple of people like himself or Miss Grimshaw, but I think the fact that he was able to save a lot of other people just shows how good of a development of a character Arthur was and just how amazing Arthur was. Just, he became this great guy from being this just straight up enforcer. So I don't know love Arthur as a character and I think he's definitely the best character in Red Dead Redemption 2 and definitely deserves a spot in S tier. So that wraps up my entire Red Dead Redemption 2 characters tier list. If you guys do want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. And if you guys would change anything, comment it down in the comment section and I'll argue with you telling you what I would change or wouldn't change. There's going to be a bunch more videos like that. So please subscribe.